Hi, and welcome back to this, the 16th episode of my ongoing saga of repairing, fixing, modifying, overhauling, CNC converting this old 7x12 lathe. At the start of this episode, I'm going to look at the uh, spindle encoding. This is needed for threading with a, under a CNC system. Because there's no physical connection between the spindle and the lead screw, you use a an encoder to report the angular position of the spindle back to the CNC controller and it synchronizes the motion of the lead screw to be able to cut threads. I still need to trim up a piece of this cover off the side to let the drive belt exit. To drive the spindle encoder I'm using the HTD drive belts. I think this is a 8mm width drive belt and it's the small 3mm pitch. I'll have to come back and adjust the bearing preload using those nuts but that'll be at the very end of the build. This is the encoder. It's an Omron uh, encoder I got off eBay. Just only 100 pulses per rev but with um, quadrature that gives me a 400 pulse per rev um, signal which should be plenty accurate enough for uh, for threading. I actually made a set of videos on machining this base plate and also 3D printing the intermediate mount plates but unfortunately I seem to have uh, deleted them. Sorry about that. The encoder mounts into some existing threaded holes in this intermediate plate. I made a long slot on this side so that I can adjust the belt tension. Now some of you might be wondering what the parts of the encoder module actually look like, so let's pull it apart and take a look. When I 3D printed it, I printed it with a slot in it to allow the Allen key to go in and undo the shaft coupler. So here we have it. This is the base plate, which mounts to the lathe. It's got a, a bearing bore to support this side of this shaft. On the end of the, the little intermediate shaft, there's this plastic coupling, okay, which came with the encoder. Just plops together like that, giving me a well-supported shaft. And then the encoder has this mounting top hatch, which goes over the top. And the whole thing gets held together like in a sandwich with the four mounting screws. So there you have it, four parts made by me. The mounting plate, this little intermediate shaft, this cover plate with the bearing in it and the encoder mount sort of top hat section. So here I'm just trying to work out how much of this uh, this cover plate I need to cut away for belt clearance. Okay, I think I've already done this once. So just need to cut away that part. Up until now, this bench has been the lathe stand. And in fact, back when I used to live in an inner city apartment, this bench on the balcony was my entire machine shop. For the mini lathe, I really only need 40 centimeters deep and about 85 centimeters long. I think I'm gonna redo the whole stand thing and make it a little more compact. When I first CNC'd the lathe, I used to use an old, really old, really ancient, uh, Windows 95 laptop running DOS and Turbo CNC. Here you can see the first generation of hardware I used in, to control this lathe. This is a, a kit set uh, L297298 based um, driving unit that I bought from some, I think it was some German uh, electronics company. I definitely burnt out one of the three channels. Somewhere along the line I switched over to Linux CNC with this big old computer here. And the silver box next to it is a 19 inch rack that I picked up at the scrap metal dealers years ago. That's got my drivers and power supplies in it. 
And since I've been working with the Mahu, I've seen the advantage of having a proper electrical cabinet. Let's take a quick look under the Mahu skirt. Just, I'll give you an idea of some of the design ideas that I quite like in this electrical cabinet. At first glance, you might find an electrical cabinet like this quite daunting. I know I sure did. Break it down, you can see that they're very modular. Just ignore these wires coming in. These are uh, just some test setup I've got for, uh, one is for the, the light I added, and the second one is just for a, a tool length sensor I've been playing around with. We've got the brain of the computer. We've got all the main electrical contactors, um, fuses, circuit breakers, and electrical hardware to control all the main muscle power items. Up here, the Indramat is an analog servo control. In here, and in those two, are the main position feedbacks back into the computer. The last part of it, or the last major module, can be seen here on the door. This is a set of low voltage relays to do all the control functions, turning things on and off. Generally, it's interfacing with heavy load uh, relays down in the main electrical cabinet and controlling them. I'll probably do a video on how I retrofitted the Mahu at a later date. Next up, we're going to open up this control box. As you can see, I put quite a bit of work into this, but sort of more like a PC case modding sort of style rather than thinking about what works best for a piece of industrial hardware that may need a bit of servicing or maintenance. Here you can see some of my poor design choices. This is set up in such a way that it's all kind of minimizes the amount of space needed, but you have to sort of put it together like a jigsaw puzzle and take it apart the same way. To get a bit more speed, I replaced that small 30, whatever, 36 volt DC power supply with this 48 volt switching power supply. The two stepper drivers are ZMX drivers from some German company. I'll pull them out and show you in a minute. And the last thing we see in here is the breakout board. I'm not going to be using the parallel port to control this, uh, this the lathe anymore, so this will also not be used in the, the next build. So what are we going to reuse from that old controller? First up, the 48 volt switching power supply. So these stepper drivers are called ZMX Minis from the German company Phytron. Uh, they're just in standard industrial stepper controllers. Um, one thing about them is, if you look, they're designed with black backplane connectors. So this was the first ever circuit board that I made. Just a, a backplane connector board I made up in Eagle. And I'll have to reuse that as well. Now this was designed to interface directly into that breakout board. But what I'll do, I'll just use make a new ribbon cable and split out the individual wires of the ribbon cable to pick up the step and direction signals that I need. I just went for a quick search through my unfinished projects warehouse to see if I could find this old electrical cabinet made by Rittle. So there's the 24 volt power supply. I don't need that for this job. There's the manuals and the Hungarian uh, 3XC analog DC servo controller, which also doesn't get used on this job. Ah, but that's what I was looking for. Rack mount uh, terminals, which I'm going to be needing. I'm at a point now where I need to make quite a few little decisions that all interact with one another about how I'm going to do the whole lathe stand and uh, wire it up in that. So one of the things, one of the aspects that needs to be considered is the enclosure. Uh, this is the old enclosure here. I cut all the pieces of out of steel, took it to work back when I worked for the airline and got the sheikis just to fold it on their big bend brake. Because I've now put the lathe up on a riser block to try and stiffen it up, I need to cut out a corner down in here to make that fit. The lid just folds down. This used to be a piece of Perspex as well, but it cracked, it broke up, and I realized I never looked through the side, I always looked through the top anyway on the small machine, so I just replaced it with a bit of sheet metal. 
while waiting for the delivery of my electrical cabinets, I'll move ahead with making a new close-off for the enclosure. So this was the original close-off panel for the enclosure here. Unfortunately, because I've now raised the lathe up, this no longer fits. So I'm going to have to make another one. And that will be done using CAD. As they say at uh, Bad Obsession Motorsport, CAD, Cardboard Aided Design. I've got the template for the first side now made and now working on the one for around the back. So I bought a sheet of uh, mild steel from the hardware store which is probably about the most expensive place you can possibly buy a bit of steel but oh well, it was available. This metal's actually a little bit thicker than I expected. I thought it was 0.75, but it's actually more like 0.9 of a millimeter. That, for any uh, American viewers who prefer fractional sizes, that's 9 tenths of a millimeter. You know, in aviation, we never really bothered using those, that gauge system, even with the American stuff. We just measured in thou, you know, like you'd have 25 thou skins, 32 thou skins. Always seemed a little easier and more logical than converting it into some sort of a gauge, especially when the gauges work in the opposite direction of size. finished fitting up the parts, next thing I need to do is just bend them and then drill them to install their fasteners. Fortunately, the, the frame of this is not terribly rigid and I made these arms just one or two millimeters too long. I really should remake them a little bit shorter to give them more clamping pressure. And I should probably replace this, this uh, angle iron at the top with something significantly thicker and also weld a stiffener across the top of the apron there. Still, despite being imperfectly rigid, it does still get a bend in there. I think I need to make up a 10 millimeter and a 15 millimeter finger for exactly this kind of job because at the moment I've got too big a gap between sizes. Well, that should do the job. If you've ever worked in a workshop with, um, with pneumatic supply on demand, 
it's kind of hard to go back to uh, just using electric stuff all the time. So a couple of years ago, I went, th went through and set up a, a line of copper pipe throughout my basement. There's two drops in this room. I think there's three in the next room and one drop in my wood workshop out the back. So certainly is convenient. hold it together with clicos while it's being drilled. Well, that's it for this week. As always, thanks very much for watching and look forward to seeing you again with the next episode.